is there in these ancient milieus, if you will, where things seem so timeless, a similar appreciation for digital preservation? It all depends. It's gotten easier every year. I started working in this position in 2003, and I can remember sitting in Lebanon, and we visited all patriarchs of Antioch. Some of them were of an age that they didn't use computers, and they had no idea what a digital photograph was. That's completely changed, because, of course, everybody in the world now has a mobile phone. And people who live in places like the Middle East or Africa or South Asia, where the landline infrastructure was never very good, just leapt completely over all the intermediate stages and went full on into digital. So they're taking photographs all the time. They're on Facebook, they're on WhatsApp, they're on all these communications media. So the digital piece has not been difficult to explain now. The challenge is persuading communities which have spent centuries, often at great cost, uh, financial, personal, threats of security to their community, protecting their most precious items, which are their manuscripts. Persuading them that it's okay to let other people read them, that it won't somehow reduce or lessen the purity of their tradition or the significance, but instead it will help a broader world understand why that particular Christian tradition, Muslim tradition, Buddhist tradition, Hindu tradition is significant. Because if they're not part of the digital conversation, they're not part of the conversation. Sometimes it takes a while to make the case. We, we go back more than once, build the personal relationships, which are so much a part of life and what are still highly traditional societies like the one you come from. You know how this works. You, you don't show up and say, have I got a deal for you? <laughs> because that's, you exactly, <laughs> that's ex exactly what they expect an American to say. And their suspicion is they've come to take our stuff and they know how to make money off it. And so finding ways to convince them that it really is a partnership, that they retain their rights and their identity, even as they generously share these materials with an online scholarly community, can sometimes take a while. But of course, cultivating those kinds of relationships means that you establish relationships that are deep and long lasting. And that's one of the most rewarding parts of this, is it's not just you do the job and you leave, but you maintain contacts and broaden the network and build in some small way uh, a greater and deeper respect for difference.